the failure here was not on the insurance company. The failure here was on the body shop. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Airing of Grievances. My name is Eric Raymer. that's Robert Grieve, and as always we are thankful for you being here with us and if this is your first time joining us don't forget to click the subscribe button that lets you know that every Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. here in the Mountain Standard Time we are going to put out another video that will be beneficial to you and the driving consumer public. All that's right? what they're designed for. That's exactly right. And of course, if you are one of our longtime viewers and or close friends, family, we say thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us for hours. Other industry giants. Other industry giants as well, yeah, for sure. All right, uh, so Robert, happy Saturday, man. Happy Saturday to you. My dear friends, happy Saturday to you. Let's, uh, let's set the stage here. The thumbnail uh, asks a question. How do you know? if you got your car repaired properly and in this particular discussion we're gonna to have today Rob to look at the outside of the car we're going to discuss yeah which happens to be a Nissan Rogue it looks like they did the job it, it does it does and unless you have a trained eye and you have you know kinda of know what you're looking for it looks great pretty good it's an industry standard repair it is an industry it's standard repair industry standard repair folks uh, when we're done with this video I'm gonna put a link to uh, the, the video that we did on industry standard and it's two words that you never want to hear anybody ever say if you hear industry standard run don't walk yep, you're in trouble yeah you're in trouble so, and, and you'll see why you'll so, see why so this is an industry standard repair okay uh, performed by a uh, a well-known multi-shop uh, national con brand con conglomerate. Yep. Yeah. That are on the list of almost all the insurance companies as a direct repair partner or a direct repair program or. Uh, the insurance company will give you a list. Hey, if you go to one of these people, we'll guarantee it. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. for as long as you own your vehicle. There's a lot of terminology that just happened in that sentence there. That uh, is another red flag for you. If if you have a shop that's being referred to you by the insurance partner of that shop, red flag. Be careful. Yeah. And we're going to show you why. We're yeah. going to back it up, not just us being alarmists. We're no. going to back it up with this story, and we got 135 others you could yep. check out. Yeah. What you do want to know is pre-loss condition. The condition the vehicle was just prior to the loss. That's yes. what an insurance company owes you to return the vehicle to. Okay. Uh, and so the question becomes, how do you know if your car has been put back to pre-loss condition? These particular folks that own this vehicle went back to the shop four or five times and could not find satisfaction and finally landed up here. Wow. We do not advertise that we do post repair inspections. Uh, it's not something I really like doing. It's I, I do it because consumers need help yeah. and this is not an easy process to go through but we know what to do. Sure. Uh, and so let's just take a quick peek at the car. All right. Well, that looks like a fairly late model. Yeah. Nice on Rogue. 19. Uh, relatively low miles. And well, it looks good from, yeah. from this perspective. It, it does. It looks good. And so the first thing that we do is we walk around the car. Well, the first thing we do is wash the car and then scan the car. So we have a sense of what's going on in the electronics and all the rest of that. Because sure. this is going to have blind spot monitors and uh, ultrasonic sensors and all the rest of that stuff. Uh, and we want to know that everything is operating as designed. Sure. And the way to do that is to plug into the system's computer and it will tell you if there's anything abnormal going on. Okay. So, 
We do all that, then we start taking a walk around and just verifying. And I do this without even looking at the estimate. Okay. I, I don't want to be skewed by the estimate. No, I want to look at the car and see what's happening. No influence right. from the paperwork. Right. Okay. So, as I open up the rear door, yeah. I see this this line inside the door, and we'll get a little closer picture of it. There's a closer picture of it. Wow. That's what we call a paint line. And what that means is that panel was painted and they put masking tape there and painted up to the masking tape, which leaves a line. Sometimes these lines actually can be sharp. Like if you run your thumb across it, you can cut your thumb. Really? Yeah. And anybody in the used car business is going to run their hands through all these jams because that's a telltale that the car has been repaired. It also is not repaired back to pre-loss condition because you can tell it was repaired. Yeah, because the the, the manufacturer did not have paint lines. Right. This vehicle's been now modified. Sure. So we would paint the whole inner jam so and, you wouldn't have that. And to finish that storyline, the reason that matters is if somebody runs their finger across it, feels the paint line, or sees the paint line as obvious as it is here, your car is worth less. Yeah, yeah, that could cost you four or five thousand dollars in value just from that paint line right there. So we move on. What else are we looking at? The bumper to the quarter panel, that's not a very good fit. Yeah. That's not the way it's supposed to be, and it sticks out. Sure like it does. We need to do a little bit more investigation. Okay. I circled uh, the rear bumper here. Yeah. And it, in case you can't read it, it says fish eyes. That, that's a term that we use in uh, the refinishing of vehicles. There, it, it's a silicone reaction or contaminant to the paint. So let's little, look a little closer and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Oh my gosh. That looks like me in eighth grade. It, it's not pretty. It's not pretty. So that's the one side of the, the oh. bumper. So then naturally, you go to the other side, and because they this bumper has been replaced, uh -huh. uh, and there it is again. Yeah, yeah. Again, anybody looking at the vehicle to purchase it is going to see these things. Sure. They are going to be more critical about the car that they're buying than the car that you're picking up from the body shop. Yes. So, they're going to be looking for these things, and why would they be looking for these things? Not only to know what kind of car they're buying, but to get the price down. That's it. And you're losing value, and this car was supposed to be put back to pre-loss condition. Right. Our job in the industry is to not only make sure that your safety is built into the repairs, and right. the car is going to operate as designed in a subsequent uh, collision, but also to restore the value of your vehicle as close as it possibly could be to no no diminished value. Diminished value is another one of those terms that we've written about and uh, done a video about. Yeah. I'll put the link up here and if you want there's a link down in the description box below. The next thing we did, because I know that panel has been repaired, is we got a mill gauge. And a mill gauge, a paint thickness mill gauge, uh, when you put it on the paint will tell you the thickness between the paint and the metal. Okay. Okay. And so what you're seeing here, and I did it on the front door, it says 6.5, rear door is 8.7. That's the thickness of the paint. Right. Uh, towards the rear of the door, you got 11.7 because they blended the door. So there's more material on the uh, end of the door than there is the front of the door. Okay. Uh, and then you get into the quarter panel and you're seeing numbers like 11.4, 25.2, 30.3, 30.5, 39.9, 31. I mean, they're big numbers. Yeah. Uh, especially if you compare it to the front door that's 6.5. Sure. Those are, are very large numbers. Uh, the green circles that are filled in, those are places that the, the machine wouldn't even get a reading. It's, too, it's so thick. Too thick. Okay. Yeah, it's too thick. I know that there's some, some work done on that. So the next thing we do is, is there any easy access to take a peek behind 
and see the inside of that quarter panel. Oh, to get inside the, the quarter itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it just had to have a handy dandy vent, and that's where the uh, jack is supposed to sit. Okay. Which the jack was rolling around in the back. I guess that's the clunk they were complaining about. They didn't put it back. They didn't put it back. Uh -huh. There's a reason they didn't put it back. We'll get into that in a okay. second. But if we take a little closer look into that hole, yeah. we see dotty dotty dot 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 and hammer marks and uh, it's not pretty. That's So what those oh. dots are is uh, there's a machine called a Spitzenigel. A uh, what? That, yeah, Spitzenigel, which is just, that's just one brand of this. We I give you a demonstration, but we do not use it in the shop. Uh, What's it called? A Spitzenigel. So that welds a tab onto the outside of the panel. Okay. All right. So you, it's like a spot welded pin, and then you pull the pin to get the dent out. But it burns the back side of the panel. And all those dots with the lines, that's all heat. All those. All that e We're coat at the burn mark. Yeah, those, that all that e coat has been burned and is going to corrode. It's gonna, it's gonna just not do what it's supposed to do, which is it's a, meant to be a corrosion protection. It has been compromised. Let's say. I, I would say that's the understatement of the year. Yeah. Um, so let's just keep going. Uh, found this little kick plate where you get in and out that had broken clips. You wouldn't notice that just opening a door. You'll notice that when you go to get in and your foot hits that. I yeah. call it a kick plate for a reason. And it falls to the ground. And it falls off. Yeah. So that, that needed to be replaced. That was broken during disassembly is our guess. Um, we talked early about uh, codes. Uh, when we plug in the computer to read, you know, what's the history of the codes. There's right. still codes in the history from the repairs and clearly on the paperwork, it's got a pre and post scan, which at the post scan, which is after the repairs are done, you would clear the history and give it back to the guest. Reset it. Yeah, you're yeah. resetting it so so that it doesn't have those codes to give away that, hey, I've been fixed. Well, maybe they were busy. Yeah, they were busy. And then the paint across the top is all dry and what we call pinching because it's, it's, it's not smooth and... Uh, so they didn't do their color sand and polish there was no color sand and polish and there was probably not enough clear applied I see which that will break down okay. not to mention it looks dry and it just doesn't look like it's supposed to look mm. so these are things that we're doing we haven't really even taken anything apart yet okay um, but it, it makes you sus suspicious sure so we took that inner trim panel all the way off to get a, a closer look at it and if you look down here that's where the jack goes in that little area. Oh, sure. And it's all bent. It's and you'll see the marks, see those uh, weld marks behind yeah, yeah. it. Would uh, you say that's uh, jacked up? Yeah, that's very funny. Thank you. You are very humorous. Thank you. Uh, will you be here all day? I will be here all day. Okay, Don't good. To tip your waiters and, wait waiters and waitresses. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what we have here is additional damage to the vehicle that isn't even part of the loss. We created more damage, not we. Thank you. Whoever repaired the vehicle uh, created more damage to the vehicle than what the vehicle had before the damage occurred. Um, moving to the next uh, picture, and if you zoom in here, you'll see the same thing on the inner wheelhouse. It's all distorted, and that's because they were using a pry bar or something to push the dent out against this panel and it bent this panel so now we have two additional bent panels that weren't bent prior to the loss and weren't bent during the loss and weren't fixed after they were damaged correct correct wow so you know we're kind of getting to the point where is this is this car pre-loss condition? Oh, hell no. Right. So when we take a little closer look at some of those welds, which they're spot welds from the Spitzen nickel gun. I know you like that name. Uh, and if if the metal is hard to pull out, by the way, this quarter panel should have clearly been replaced. Uh, I saw the before pictures. We wouldn't even consider doing a repair on the thing. Yeah, you could have led with that. It, it's horrific. But what happens with the Spitzenugel gun when you 
put it on there and it welds the thing on and then you pull real hard on that pin when the pin comes off sometimes it makes a hole well this is body filler coming through the hole on the other side like a play-doh machine oh sure <laughs> i see that yeah many of you are too young to know what a play-doh machine we're gonna have a bowl is, full of spaghetti here in a minute yeah yeah so again now we have holes in the panel that weren't there before filled with and, and bondo that could right possibly fall out well it, it's there are some people to say that should hold the bondo in uh on the panel better but so again the, these burn marks went all the way through the panel this one you can clearly see was uh, you know a bad one yeah and and it's just bare metal that looks like a spitz and nickel yeah yeah uh so all these are going to rust and you're never going to see it because it's behind that panel yeah so the car looks like it's fixed from the outside, but it is clearly not fixed from the inside. Sure. If we were to do a repair on this, and it'd be a small repair, if there was a repair at all, we would go in there and sand that hole inside of the panel and recoat it that e-coat color. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you in this picture is you can still see all the hammer marks. Oh, it so, looks like the, the surface of Mars. Yeah, you can't see that from the outside because it's got all that body filler that's been sculptured uh, to, so you can't see it from the outside, but clearly if you go on the inside, this car has not been fixed properly. I want to uh, address something you just said. You said if we were to do a repair on this job and it would be a small one, um, that, if we were to do a repair in place of doing a replacement, but yeah. we would do a replacement. In this particular case, it would have been replaced all day yeah. long. Yeah. Uh, but let's just say, you know, somebody's got a small dent in your door. You don't throw the door away for that. Sure. You fix it, but you don't fix it like this. And again, we don't use this tool here. We use glue pole uh, uh, from Kiko. It's a great system. Okay. Um, and it doesn't leave any of this. And if we can't fix it with the glue pole system, it gets replaced. Gets replaced. Simple as that. So that's what I have as far as the vehicle goes, what some of our findings. Yeah. Uh, the car was not repaired to pre-loss condition. There's additional damage caused to the vehicle. Like that, that place I showed you where the jack yeah. goes in well the jack's not going to fit in because where it fits in is all bent out it's compromised it's compromised so uh these are important for things for you the consumer sure you're not going to be able to see these things you need to bring it to somebody and have them take a quick peek at it to make sure that things were repaired properly um you know the the goal again is pre-loss condition that's what the insurance company owes Right. Uh, but the failure here was not on the insurance company. The failure here was on the body shop. And maybe they were trying to fit into the box that the insurance company wants, because if you write repair on something that should be replaced, the insurance company is not going to question you. They're just going to say, okay, you're going to fix the car, and, and this thing's going to be done and over with, and we're we've indemnified the guest. It's up to the shop to make you make the repair correctly. Yes. And this was a very, very bad decision and a bad execution on repairing a vehicle. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, as soon as I spoke with the insurance company about it, they were right on it and this vehicle has been deemed a total loss. Uh, because of what it would take to correctly fix this vehicle now with the additional damage on top of the original damage. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, these are the types of things we want to show you so that you can understand what kind of goes on behind the curtain. Right. Uh, and, you know what, this would cost these guests a lot of money if they went to, uh, you know, trade the car in or something. Right. They're going to find it. Yeah. They're going to find it, and they're going to easily five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000 less in value than what the car was before the, the loss. Yeah. So, 
Well, that's what I have for us today. Well, I'm, I'm grateful for you sharing that with us. And if you found value in this, we would be thankful for a thumbs up, if you would, please. That helps the YouTube algorithm uh, understand that this is valuable to you. The other way that you can show value to, uh, you know, if this was valuable to you, is to share it with your friends and family. Just copy the link and send it out on face Facebook or uh, what do they call Twitter now? X? Yeah, maybe. Uh, or <laughs> w wherever it may go. This gets a big X. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elon thanks you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Rob, thank you, brother. Happy hey, Saturday. Happy Saturday. My friends, happy Saturday to you. Hope you found value. Have an amazing week. Look, to, look forward to seeing you next Saturday.